GCSE students, you now just have one more physics exam to go. It's on Friday afternoon. And I don't really have a huge amount of specific advice. By this point, you are all experts at going and doing your GCSE exams. And hopefully now you've got the confidence that you do know that all of the revision that you've been doing, all the work you've been doing lessons actually pays off. So in terms of the exam itself, the, the main bit of advice that I think you need is to make sure that you do have your protractor. I know you've got your calculator, you know how to use that. You know that uh, when it comes to any of the equations and the numerical side of things, you've got your data sheet and formula booklet to actually look at, to actually select the right equation. And then it's often a relatively straightforward case of putting in the numbers and doing the maths. The thing that sometimes catches students out is when you have to measure an angle, uh, perhaps if you've got something to do with reflection or the refraction of light. Um, so that's important. Uh, the other thing, and I think this came up on the AQA paper one higher exam, uh, they had quite a tricky question where you had to draw a tangent onto a line to look at the activity of a sample. Potentially, they might get you to do something similar. Uh, if you're looking at a velocity time graph and you're trying to work out the acceleration at a particular point. And don't forget, of course, um, that when you do work out the gradient of a line, that if it's going downwards, then that would mean you might have a negative acceleration. That's something that people maybe occasionally tend to forget. Apart from that, um, what more can I say really? All of you, I'm sure, are super well prepared. Uh, I think paper two, it's got some nice topics looking at forces and motion. Um, it's also got stuff to do with waves, which is quite a nice topic. Um, and then maybe for some of you doing the, the separate or the triple physics, there's a little bit about space as well. Um, the last thing I'd like to say for anybody who is doing GCSE physics is do consider taking it for A-level. I know some of you have already made that decision. If you are one of those lucky people, I think it's probably about 40 to 50,000 people uh, doing A-level physics each year, then do consider this book here. This is my daily workout book. This one is uh, called Book One. And basically what I have are questions that cover every day of your A-level physics course. Now this book is designed for you to have a look at over the summer holidays. And it's got questions that start in July. So you know, a couple of weeks time, you get a bit of a break. And then you could just do, you know, two or three questions every day. And if you do those, it's going to reinforce the stuff you've done at GCSE. It's going to reinforce your maths knowledge. And it means that when you go and start your A-levels in September, you're going to have a nice transition. Often, the hardest bit of A-level physics is going from year 11 to year 12. And actually going from year 12 to year 13, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, and of course, I also have videos for everything to do with A-level physics at alevelphysicsonline.com, including these guides to the start of A-level physics and kind of how that's similar to what you've been doing at GCSE and how it's more interesting. So yeah, um, apart from that, good luck in your last physics exam and I hope it all goes really well.